I'm Sean McMillan, and this is my co-host, Richard Morrow. What's going on? What's going on? Yes, McMillan and Morrow. Us. Out here. How does that make you feel? I feel good, man. We on our 18th episode, man. It's a blessing. Yes, it is. It's Listen, good. everybody, thank All you for right. being a part of this. It's going to be a great experience. Sit down, relax. We're going to share some things with you that I'm sure you've not heard. And if you have, you're going to hear them in a very different way. Because oh, we yeah. traffic in things that most people have too much sense to traffic in. <laughs> but, you know, Rich brings the stories, and I tell you what I think. <laughs> so here we go. Come on, Rich. So let's see what's going on around our great old country, right? According to CBS, in Boston, Massachusetts, lawmakers are proposing letting Massachusetts prisoners donate organs for reduced sentences. Can you believe that? Wait, what? They're allowing them to donate their organs to get a reduced sentence. What organs can you donate that you could later subsequently live without? <laughs> well, let's see. Um, it doesn't give any... Well, the legislation would give... Like a kidney? It says it'll give people anywhere from 60 days to a year off their sentence on the condition that the incarcerated individual has donated bone marrow or organ or organs. Oh, I think it, I think I think it depends on the crime. Yeah. Right. Um, well, let me let me just no. Let me answer with a very visceral answer. I don't like the notion of taking people's organs as a condition for release. Yeah. Something seems kind of... Inhumane about it. That's what critics are saying. Inhumane's not even enough. They said it's like they're harvesting organs. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> it, 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 it seems corrupt Doesn't to me. Doesn't feel right. That, that's why inhumane wasn't a good word. It, yeah. it, it seems corrupt. Yeah. Like, so... And most of the people who go to prison, by the way, are, are black and brown and poor people. And poor they're white vulnerable. People. It's like you're bargaining with people that literally are yeah. just trying to... Oh, I'll let you out. <laughs> let you give me that kidney. <laughs> what? You get 60 days off <laughs> if you give me your kidney. I mean, I mean, and I heard bone marrow in itself is really a painful process, too, isn't it? Give me them 60 days. <laughs> Taking that, huh? All right. I will stay in the damn prison 60 months. 60 days off, that's not enough. To a year. 60 to a year. About six years. Yeah. No. It, that's yeah. corrupt. It don't sound, it doesn't, now, now, now here's the pushback though. Because whenever, whenever, see, the hallmark of a superior intelligence mm -hmm. is your ability to look at an issue from both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do have people who need organs. And that was their thing. We have people who need, you know, bone marrow trans, what's it called? Trans transplants? Mm-hmm. Right? But people need these things. And then we have people who are who have not committed crimes walking around who won't do it. Yeah. Because how many people you know have donated an organ or would do anything for science at this level? Very few people yeah, would do it. Yeah, not too many. Mm -hmm. I don't know any. <laughs> I don't know a damn I mean, person. you put organ donor on your license. It don't mean you do it while you're alive. Well, you, you yeah. Know. And the only reason I checked it is because I'll be dead. Exactly. Me I don't too. know anybody's willing to give up an organ while they're alive. Unless it's like saving a, you know, daughter or something And like I that. still have to think about that. <laughs> I'm going to be like, wait a minute. What was that movie? Um, was it Seven Pounds when he, um... Yeah, yeah, he went around giving his organ. That was one of his last few good movies. <laughs> we, won't, we won't name who that is, but you know. We know. I, I'm a big fan still, so... But... I'm not. <laughs> we made, you not, made that I so clear. Not. And you know why? We're totally off the rails, but so what? I'll tell you why. You ready? Yeah. Because I want him to be better. Yeah. I want him to stop needing attention. Yeah. And stop being crazy. Just and, focus on the work again. And settle in to your greatness. Yeah. Huh? Daniel you. Day Lewis. That's his name, right? <laughs> That's the guest. No, no, I'm saying that's another actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, the yeah. hell I'm talking about? <laughs> I went to Ivy League school, people. I know what I'm doing. All right. So, Daniel Day Lewis. That's that's. I get his name right. Yes, you did. You know, he's a great actor, right? He is. You don't see him doing crazy stuff. No, you don't see a lot of them. Meryl though. Streep. You don't ever hear about her in the blog. But they are masters at their craft. Mm -hmm. I want this actor that we're talking about <laughs> to be like that. Yeah, where they I, I want him to be so committed to what he's doing that he doesn't have time yeah. to be on on social media, yeah. you know, doing stupid stuff. Yeah, I mean, I hear you. No. I, what the hell am I talking about? Oh, seven pounds. 
Right. You mentioned that. I, I was trying not to dig too much. I went down into the rabbit hole because I'm just tired of people needing attention like this. Yeah. But no, I'm not giving my organs unless mm -hmm. I'm dead. Okay. And I don't think it's a good idea for you to barter with people over their freedom yeah. to get to, to give you. And I'm still trying to figure out, other than a kidney, what organ can I give you that after right. you let me out, I won't be dead after you take it? Like what? Maybe intestines or something. Maybe. You need your intestines, Rich. Parts of it. I mean, it's a big organ, so I imagine you probably take some of it out and be okay. Are you going to gonna sew it into somebody else? I don't know what they do. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. Before we move on, I, somebody come up with another organ. Yeah, I, I don't you know. Can, that, you, that you can live without. Audience can give us some of those, too. Like a testicle. Yeah, but who want to live without one of them? <laughs> He said, oh, a lung, you can live in one a lung. I was wondering, but a lung, a lung having one lung sounds like it would be a very painful and. If I had one lung, I'd have to stop smoking cigars. <laughs> and you, yeah, I don't know. That's not going to happen. Nope. Is there only one liver? One liver? Yes, only one liver. You can't live without that, huh? Can't live without your liver. Yeah. But you can get parts. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. That's no. A, it's a strong no for me. This is <laughs> a strong no for me. This sounds inherently corrupt. <laughs> Yeah, it does. And it sounds some, It sounds like something that the criminal justice system should not be participating Something's in. Something's going on that shouldn't be, in my opinion. This don't sound right. Yeah. My, all my spidey senses, mm -hmm. all my intuition is saying this is... Huge this, red flag. Yeah, yeah. You pull me over, <laughs> right? You, you, you beat my ass when you pull me over. I end up in jail. You put me in jail. You charge me a bail that I can't afford. So you offer me. Right. So I got to stay in jail longer. And then you offer me the opportunity to get out if I give you one of my organs. And we don't know where that organ's actually no, going. I'm good. Look, we don't even know where it's actually going. I almost said something racial. <laughs> Let's you, keep racing. You want to hear, you want to hear All of our organs are the same color on the inside. I was, I was still going to be racial. <laughs> I'm asking you in advance, do you want to hear what I was going to say? Please do, just for... White folks need to get their organs and come out here. <laughs> okay, go on over to Europe and get your organs. I'm going over there. Don't be coming to Brooklyn and Atlanta to get your organs. Okay? I'm sorry, people. It came out. It's a lot of athletes out of Brooklyn. <laughs> Boy, you're going to hell. Just you're going, like you're going it. Straight to hell. You know that? I pray for you constantly for your soul and your sanity. You I did not mean that, people. Y'all know I did not. Mm -mm. Um, 12 on the inside. I can't help it. Taking people's organs. No, that's actually days. nuts, though. It, this it, is actually um, making me upset. Because it's actually a real thing. It, I'm like, this is It would be cool if it, it's, it's not even cool when you see it in movies. You know what I mean? And to think that this is actually something that the government could be spending money on right now in today's day and ages. No, there's something wrong. Some scary, something scary wrong, stuff. People. Keep your eyes open, y'all. Keep your organs, okay? Y'all keep your organs. Keep them tight. <laughs> Next story. Well, wait, wait, wait. You stuck on No, no, this is, here, here it is. Listen to this, though. How many times have people made deals okay. to get things that wasn't worth the deal they made? That's crazy and you say that. And people will constantly compromise the, their way into a worse situation as opposed to just dealing with the difficulty. We try to avoid pain. We try to avoid suffering. We try to avoid loneliness. Huh? Mm -hmm. Huh? And we make deals to avoid the very thing life sends into our lives to help form different parts of us that only suffering and heartbreak and loneliness can form. Can form. Mm -hmm. Listen, don't make a deal to avoid something that you were meant to experience. Amen. Especially if your ass broke the law. Yeah. Stay in jail. Keep your, keep your liver. Take accountability. Come on now. Yeah. You know that was good. That was real good. I'm not going to lie. It was no, deep. Tyler, you it didn't even deep. say good job. You know it was good when I don't laugh or nothing. It just, it's right here. I'm going to drink some. Champagne water. water. No, this is water. That's water. Water. That was the brand. <laughs> <laughs> I almost spit. <laughs> I, almost, I almost spit on this camera. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. You like that? <laughs> you gotta be on your feet. You gotta be on your feet. Who? You ready? According to 
I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to butcher this Korean publication's name, but legally, a Korean publication states that... Hank Yo Rae. Hank Yo Rae. Hank Yo Rae. I tried. <laughs> I ain't even want to try, see? Y'all putting me in compromised situations. Well, your Irish accent was the worst thing. My Irish. Oh, no, wow. The Irish. I can't even do it. That was terrible. Yeah, I get that one. Do, that was like a D minus. Can you do Irish. like a, a British one? I can do a British one. A little bit, little bit better than Irish. <laughs> that was a little better. I can do a little bit better. All right, go ahead. Read the story. Um, according to a Korean woman... What are you laughing at? Just <laughs> because I have to turn the accent off. Um, <laughs> Wait, you forgot to cut it off? <laughs> it was like stuck halfway in between both. <laughs> okay, so according to this Korean publication, a Korean woman heard from a friend that the chairman of a sizable construction company was super ill, right? Mm -hmm. And that he needed a liver transplant. Mm. Well... She offered to donate her liver mm -hmm. in order to get her son a job at the company. She's a damn fool. <laughs> no. So no. that's in exchange for 77,000 US dollars, which is about 100 million won, and a job. She should have, first of all, can company. I just jump in? Go ahead. I, don't, I never mean to cut you off. And when I mm -hmm. do, you know, it's it's because I'm excited. Mm -hmm. um, how about. We live in a world where people, if you're going to donate a liver, you ask for more. Yeah. I mean, value your damn liver enough. <laughs> 77,000 in a job? That's not enough. <laughs> no, no, no. A hundred, two hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars It's still probably enough. I mean, it's but it's better than 77000 It's better. No, 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 But no. they're in, what, South Korea? That could be a lot of money for them, you know. It could there. be, but your son can't get another job somewhere else? What kind of son do you Sounds have? That's what I'm wondering. And tell, check this out. She took it even further. So this is how she got caught, mind you. This is like a crazy situation. She pretended to be the daughter-in-law of the chairman, okay. and she was approved to be the organ donor. But upon preparation for the surgery, she got diagnosed with COVID-19. And during the delay, the caregivers noticed that... You know, there were certain peculiar, you know, circumstances that soon determined that she wasn't who she said she was. So if she hadn't gotten COVID, she might have actually snuck her way into this situation of actually being the donor. And, um, yeah, they canceled the surgery and everything. But she, and I quote, said, I thought my son would be able to get a job if the operation was a success. I also got greedy because they promised to give me money. So that's why she did all of it. She got fined, and those that were involved in the scam were sentenced to jail time. The chairman, by the way, has since passed away. He should have took that kidney. That's why I Listen, had to say that. Because I still I can't know. figure out why she couldn't donate it. Why? She... Because she wasn't a relative, and I guess she tried to oh, lie. Oh, you need to be a relative. Was. Probably. Do you yeah. need to be a relative? Mm -hmm. Oh, so it, might, it probably wouldn't have worked for him anyway. Not sure. It's probably just very high risk. It's probably just a high risk. Okay. Well, now, because I'd have been like, listen, if I'm the chairman, let's talk about it from the chairman's perspective. Mm -hmm. If I'm the chairman and you downstairs, Rich, talking about you want to give me your kidney? <laughs> and I'm, listen, I'm talking about cut him open. Right now. I'm taking the kidney. Yeah, I But now you. that I understand that you need to be, you know, something of a relative to get it. Well, let's, let's talk about this from the perspective of the mom. Mm -hmm. So, And I'll ask you this question. Is this an example of a mother's love? I think so. Or a woman's insanity? Both. I think there's love there. There's no, I think you have to have some sort of love, you know, in your intentions to even take it to that point. But you also got to slightly be insane to go to those lengths too, because there's so many other, I feel like, options that you could choose before you land on that one. But she saw the opportunity and she went for it, I guess. <clears throat> I think it's an example of a parent mm -hmm. doing something for their children that their children should be doing for themselves. Drops mic.
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I agree. Because I love my sons to death, right? Mm-hmm. You ain't giving up no kidney for them. Or no Not to get a job. No. <laughs> now, if, you need, if your ass needs a kidney to live, That's we different. can have that discussion. Mm-hmm. But for you to get a job, what is it about you? Again, I'm not talking about you. Yeah, I know. The proverbial you. I know. I, I put you in the in the in the position of the person I'm talking about. Yeah. What is it about you that makes you incapable of getting a job mm -hmm. on your own yeah. without me having to go to these limbs? Yeah. And if I protect you from your failure, your inability, your ineptness, right? The enormity yeah. of your Lack of giftedness. I was going to say, and there's a lack of belief that comes with that, too. It, it, even then, <laughs> if I protect you yeah. from the fact that I don't really believe in you, <laughs> then what does that ultimately do to you? I'll give my kidney, you'll get the job, mm -hmm. and guess what you'll do with the job? You'll mess it up. You'll mess it up anyway, because you ain't earn it. And not, Yes, and you don't have the wherewithal. Yeah. You don't have the ability. See, a lot of people think, once I get in, I'm good. No. People don't realize once you get in, you got to perform. You got to perform. <laughs> yeah. You got to perform. Yeah. You know? A lot of athletes, you know, learn that the hard way, fight their whole lives to get to a certain point, and then they get there and think, oh, I made it. And then they realize that's when the real work begins. You know you this because we, we're friends. As well. We're friends mm -hmm. outside of this. Kobe Bryant and I were friends for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Literally. Yeah. Friends for 20 years. Very good friends. Mm -hmm. And Kobe didn't have many friends. Yeah. He's not that kind of person. Mm -hmm. Kobe was a very complicated person to get along with. Definitely okay, told me. So the fact that he and I were friends was a miracle. It was crazy how it started. It was no. meant to happen. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you the story after, yeah. after, after I get done with this point. Mm -hmm. My point is this. Kobe understood that what separates a great player from most players is after you get to the league, if you still want to work hard and be great, you can achieve it. It's the point you're making. Mm -hmm. Most people get to the league... And they think that they've made it. They, they cash the their checks, they <clears throat> sleep with their women, they smoke their weed, yep. they do whatever they want to do, and now they're living the dream. Mm -hmm. he, he never wanted to live the dream. He wanted to be better than everybody else. <laughs> Period. That was the dream. That was his dream. <laughs> to dominate people. Yeah. That's a, different, that's a different mentality. Yeah. And everybody can have the same results if they have the same approach. True and the same mindset. Yeah. And when you have a kid in your house or in your life for whom you got to give a kidney for them to get a job, yeah. it's not just the kid's fault. Yeah. It's the parent's fault. For sure. Because you've been covering for that kid long before now. And this is the length you're taking it to this time. Let me tell you something. Yeah. You know what I said to my sons? Hmm. The difference between college and high school is that in high school, when you make a mistake, I help you out. <laughs> college, when you make a mistake, why are you laughing so much? I know this is about to be funny. It's on your ass. Yeah. I can't clean up the mistakes that you make as a man. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I can. But as a grown man, I cannot. Yeah. And and if you, if you talk to them now, they will say to you that that conversation really stuck out with them because mm -hmm. they realize, oh, he's not coming to my rescue. It's real now. I can't. It's on me, yeah. You're 18 years old. You're yeah. 20 years old. You do something crazy, they're not calling me. Yeah, they call them. You're going to call me from jail. Exactly. But they won't. <laughs> you they know don't what care saying? who your parents are. So my, my thing is always, sometimes the best way to love someone is to expose them yeah. to the consequences of who they are. Mm. Whew. That's deep. Yeah. And that's real. That's good. That's very, very real. I love that, man. Y'all take that with y'all. <laughs>
of an influence he was having because people wanted to look like him. He was shredded. He's, you know, really built. Really <clears throat> but built. check this out. He ended up making a video recently that admitted to using fraud and that he's a fraud and that his godly physique is a result of steroids and that he was spending $11,000 a month on steroids. So he had people out there really eating yeah. raw yeah. liver and testicles yeah. thinking that they were going to look like him. And meanwhile, he just shooting up in the back. Because those are the people who, like someone else I know, mm -hmm. are influenced by other people being naked on trains. I don't know who you're trains. referring to. You know, I mean, it's... it's I'm talking to me. None of, nothing about this story surprises me. <laughs> yeah. Because people are fundamentally dumb mm -hmm. at a very basic... Most people are dumb. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not being pejorative when I say that. I know you're not. It's, it's, it's just <laughs> true. It's just true. And then had the nerve to apologize so many times. Like, if I could just show you how many times he puts in the words, in quotes, you know, he blames himself. It was wrong. He'll do better. He's ashamed. He lied and misled so many people. It's like, yeah, you wasn't ashamed when you was making $100 million. Or we saved it. <laughs> even, I don't feel like it even mattered. You know how I many people probably suing <laughs> <laughs> all of that money. Eating cow balls. <laughs> I know if somebody led me to eat some damn testicles, I'm if, suing the hell out of them. If I ate a horse's nuts <laughs> because the guy on TikTok told me I should do it, first of all, I deserve whatever you happens. deserve to me. it. Whatever happens to me, I deserve it because I'm too dumb to feel <laughs> I should eat testicles. Like, that's not a delicacy. Testicles. <laughs> if it guaranteed you a six pack, would you do it? No. No? You still wouldn't? You don't think you could stomach that? I almost said something. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you for oh self restraint I'm praying. Y'all pray with me. Thank you for self-restraint, Lord, because I was going to say something to not only expose myself... <laughs> but also get you fired. <laughs> listen. I, I, listen. Mm-mm. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying find to, a way to swear. Yeah, I'm trying to. I mean, if you want balls in your mouth, <laughs> there's a way to do it. That's okay. It's totally okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for it. It doesn't have to be by way of eating testicles. And you don't have to eat them. <laughs> all right? Testicles in your mouth, you can do, you know, lick. <laughs> Whatever it is, but you don't don't eat them. Oh, don't there'd be a them. lot of people walking around with six packs, huh? If it... <laughs> would, you, would, you, would, you, would you do it? Well, you already have a six pack. <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah, I'm not doing. I'm, I'm not good. eating. I'm not eating anything. Oh no, man. Oh man. Yeah, I, I almost just... got a six pack from. I get my six pack from laughing at your jokes. And... Okay, well I don't really. Yo, yeah, I'll be laughing hard. At my jokes. real, real, real laughs from the soul sometimes. <laughs> I think that's why I got my six pack. No, no. So thank you for that. Now you're showing off. That was okay. just the thank now you. That off. was my stomach and six pack. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, don't be mad. Don't be mad. I'm, I'm jealous. I'm envious. He said that he. You did. know what? Now that I think about it, I might eat some balls. <laughs> Not your balls, Tyler. Okay. Not yours. Not yours. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh man, y'all! <laughs> <laughs> so, what brand did you say that was? <laughs> right. What's, 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 what's the water called, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> y'all are so funny. <laughs> oh man. What is you going want, on with this episode? Man, man, man it's been the last couple ones. We done had some, some, some moments. Oh. They did tell us to continue. <laughs> they like the laughter, so we're going to bring funny. the funny. But, man, this next story is probably going to have you laughing, too, because it's right on par. Man. Bro, what would you say? We got to get serious? Yeah, I mean, oh, it's a little bit more serious, serious but okay. for some reason, I feel like we're going to find a way to... Well, you will. You laugh, you laugh at your own funeral. I know. Yeah, if I can, I probably will. Especially if they got a QR code with videos <laughs> of me. <laughs> Half of the videos is probably going to be me laughing, let's be real. Ooh, if they show any Judge Dad clips. But anyway, so... 
Um, Indiana, man, we in the Midwest. This is crazy. According to 14 News, an addiction counselor got arrested on meth dealing charges. Can you believe that? Yeah. Yeah, you think addiction counselors just be dealing meth? They're human. Commonly? Yeah, okay. Yep. You're right. And, and pastors lose faith. It was the former owner of an addiction no, counselor. No, no, I'm not center. done. Mm. Pastors lose faith. Oh, you're and, right. and, and psychologists fall into despair. Yeah. Yeah, I could totally get that. Keep going. Yeah, he got tips that, or police received tips that he was selling drugs while offering, you know, counseling services, of okay, course. Okay, now, I was, I thought you were going to stop with the <laughs> fact that he was using, no. he's selling drugs too? Yeah, I mean, okay. yeah, I mean, it was a meth dealing charge, not him taking meth. Oh, I he was a I meth misunderstood. dealer. Oh, he was, he and was he was like, an he addiction was like, counselor. I got meth. How do you he, sell meth? You know? Think about how many customers he had. All how do you of his, sell it? Do you go, I got meth. I mean, I think you, you probably have all the clients in the room, and you know the one thing everybody in that room is thinking about probably is doing meth. All you got to do is show them That's a little right, bit of that. That's what I'm saying. That's what makes oh, it a real tough situation. I didn't make that connection. Now you get it. He had a captive audience. Oh, his whole, all his whole client. <laughs> You're terrible. You are awful. He didn't even have to go look for him because they would always... Be coming to him. You know how much I pray for your salvation? It's just so messed up, man. You have any idea? I pray for me too, man. I appreciate that. Me and your mom, we pray for your salvation. I pray for me too, but you got to be able to laugh at life, man. But some of this is actually crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. This is nuts. And at the man's home, they say they found guns, body armor, marijuana, digital scales, a hidden room with a safe and ammunition. They also found handwritten ledgers what? showing the what? names of people who owed him as much as $43,000. So he was a real dealer. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I take, real I take everything I say. <laughs> he was a real dealer. I was, I was doing the pastor losing his fame. The psychologist falls into despair. This is, I take it all. Where's my camera? This one. I take it all back, people, okay? <laughs> This guy is a criminal. <laughs> okay? He's going to jail. Not just hell. J he's going to jail. A criminal. Wow. And, you know, and this is funny because this officer sounded like you in the beginning of the story. An officer said, we try not to judge people on who they are and we treat everyone fair. And if someone is a role model in the community and they get caught doing something illegal, they're going to jail just as much as someone who maybe, you know, has a long criminal history. Facts. Um, this tells us, though, as a community as a whole, how real the disease of substance, you know, use disorder is and how serious it is. And that as a community, we should take, you know, this seriously because there's people that are literally taking advantage of addicts, people that they know and then, you know, are disguising themselves as being trustworthy people, you know, coming for their aid, but contributing to their demise. And when you think of that, man, I... I mean, I, I got close family members. I mean, I lost my dad, and he was someone that dealt with, you know, having to deal with addiction. So mm. if that was a family member of mine that got caught in that, I would oh, be pissed. I'd beat his ass. What? Oh, yeah. I'm, and you got to think about it. Like, man, there's probably so many people that didn't know for a long time that this was going on, and they're willingly dropping them off, you right. know, and taking them to this man and... Man, just to think about that is just crazy to me that that's real. Like, that sounds like something out of a movie or a show for real. Mm -hmm. People are nuts. So, so because this cuts close to home, how does it make you feel? It makes me angry. Mm -hmm. One, because, all right, if you're going to be a dealer of some sorts and you're going to try to make money, you know, in that world, there's, I feel like, a moral standard that still needs to be had. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to prey on people that are dealing with something of that, you know, stature in multiple ways. It's one thing just to be selling it to them and giving it to them. It's another thing to be leading them to, you know, all of these situations that they're going to literally find help in. Then it's like, where can you go? Where can you go if you can't go to an addiction counselor now, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I think about is like, if that's what's going on, there's nowhere else you can really turn. I mean, if you don't have people in your life that are gonna be able to help you with that, trained professionals are supposed to be the ones you could turn to, and if you can't even turn to them, and they're the ones that are, you know, I mean, it just shows you that I think the state of our country in a lot of ways, and it, I'm not gonna blame one individual or anybody in particular, but it's like, that's a red flag to me in a serious way, when you got people that are really trusted to help people on that mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm going to such lengths just to make money because times are that hard or because, you know, the environment is that, you know, influential or whatever the case may be. Either way, it should never get to that point. Mm. It shouldn't.
No, I, I think you're. <clears throat> I think you're right. Obviously. Yeah. Um, but also think that. So hearing you talk about it, mm -hmm. it's a little different because you can talk about addiction in the abstract. Yeah. <clears throat> or you could talk about addiction from the perspective of being an addict. Yeah. Or you could talk about addiction from the perspective that you talk about. Mm -hmm. And that is being connected to someone who struggled with it yeah. and lost their battle to it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that people really understand that we've criminalized addiction. Yeah. When we should have been working to treat it. And rehabilitate it. For what it is. Yeah. And really help people, and and to and to treat it as the sickness that it is. Yeah. Um. I don't know your father's story, mm -hmm. which is at, at all, by the which way, because yeah. I've known you for nine, eight, nine years. Yeah, it's just something that I, you know, it's not an easy subject, obviously, but mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things that I've just grown to learn more about over the years because of having mm -hmm. different people in my life that I know have been affected by it and me wanting to be able to help in different ways, you do your research on it. And the one thing that I know, almost every person that I know that deals with a serious addiction is the first thing anybody is gonna tell you is go get help. Right. If you can't even go to the people that you would go get help from, then we're in a very, very tough situation as a country yeah. because now all of these things are just being multiplied. So do you think that the person who does this, mm -hmm. the counselor who's actually a drug dealer, yeah. should be treated and charged in the same way that we should treat and charge a cop I was gonna say. who beats and kills someone who is innocent and unarmed? Yeah, um, it's like what we talked about in the one episode. Um, I think that was the one where Carrie was here where um, they should be held to a higher standard. <clears throat> you know, it's almost like a lawyer passing the bar. You right. know, it's <clears throat> a doctor passing the MCAT or whatever. It's It's got to be something where people are held and fearful enough not to venture into that space because of fear of punishment, because it should be that serious. It should be taken, it, it's pretty much given the license to take someone's life in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's people that deal with addictions that lead them to suicidal things all the time. Yeah. And it's like, if you're adding to that pot, and I know it's a serious subject, but it's like, what are we doing? Like, literally, like, what are we doing? If that's something that people are allowing in any way, shape, or form to happen and times are that bad, something's got to change. I may not know yeah. what the answers are, but it needs to be a rapid response <laughs> because it's an emergency. To which, to which I will add, <clears throat> maybe the wisdom here is that we should we should not turn people loose. Yeah. When when not long ago, just follow me. Not long ago, a plane uh, flew intentionally flew into a mountain mm -hmm. because there were two pilots in there. One of the pilot went to the bathroom. The other pilot was suffering from mental health. Mm. Locked the door and flew the plane into a mountain. Wow. From that moment forward, the FAA and and aviation agencies around the world said. They can never not be two people in the cockpit. So you'll notice now when you get on a plane and the pilot goes to the bathroom, a, a stewardess will go into the into the cockpit mm -hmm. because you just never know yeah. when you've caught someone on a really bad day. Mm. The point I'm making is we should not turn people loose. Mm. There needs to be more accountability, more collaboration, more partnership, yeah. where it's not just me and one counselor. It's me and two counselors, or exactly. that counselor has to report to people. Checks and balances. Checks and balances, yeah. because you're never going to get around. Yeah. You're never going to get around the capacity of human beings to be fallible and weak and seedy mm -hmm. and salacious. Yeah. You're never going to get around that. It's but you can nature. mitigate the damage that they cause by having two cockpits in the pilot. Yeah, structure. And two pilots <laughs> in the cockpit. Yeah, I think these things need to be designed with the human condition and mind now. Um, I think a lot of times people expect things to be black and white so much just because it's on, you know, 
it's been built that way or whatever. But times have changed a lot. Mental health wasn't something people were focused on as much. Addiction, I feel like, wasn't something that wasn't taken as seriously as people want to take it now because people are more educated on things and whatnot. Um, I think with that, certain rules and guidelines need to change as well so that we can but, make sure that these things don't get worse. But let me say this, to, and this will change the tone a little bit. Yeah. The entire damn country is in counseling, and we still crazy. And we still crazy, yeah. Everybody you know is in therapy. You ever notice that? Everybody, you ask anybody, you in therapy? Yes. You ever see the counselor? Yes. And your ass is still <laughs> crazy. But I, I will say, too, though, I do meet people that have done the work, and I see people that have changed in times. You know, obviously, I wish I could see more. I think a lot of us can agree. A lot of people still need work out there. But um, to think? see results in the people that you do see it in is inspiring for me because that shows me, one, that the system in some ways is actually working at times. But... We have a much bigger issue, I think, and we don't have enough people, I feel like, that care where we're checking and making sure that things are being done the right way. Two because, pilots yeah. in the cockpit. Yeah, we need we need two, two pilots in the cockpit at all times. Yeah, you just don't turn people... In every field. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's, that's why we have me and you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're two pilots in the cockpit. That's crazy, though, man. Like Flying whew. around. And he was a real dealer, huh? He tries to fly us into mountains... I say no. You taking the wheel. Jesus taking the wheel. Good one. I know you're gonna like this story because this is something you would do. Does it involve thousand food? percent? No, it involves money though. And man, I can't wait to hear what you about to say about this. <laughs> so. There's a lottery winner, according to the Fortune. This is in China, by the way. According to the Fortune, a lottery winner kept his $30 million prize a secret from his wife and child because he didn't want them to become lazy. My kind of guy. I know it is. I was like, this is something <laughs> that's got you written all already. over it. What is his name? I can't, I can't tell you his name. Okay, that's right. We can't do that. <laughs> He's keeping it a secret. That's the whole point of the yeah, article. That is true. <laughs> This, he's my soulmate. We are bonded together in life and intention. If I won $40 million, nobody would know. <laughs> nobody would know. Yeah. I wouldn't change a thing. And he wore a bright yellow costume that covered his head in his photos when he accepted the prize so that nobody would know that it was him. Oh, this is, this <laughs> is love my this guy. guy. And he donated $5 million to charity. Can I get up and give him a standing <laughs> ovation? Oh, yes, sir. We can give him this a round of applause. He deserves it. a round of applause for this that. This is how you do it, yes. He definitely deserves a round of applause. I will give you that for sure. Listen, everybody <laughs> watching, this is how you do it. This is how you do life right here. L this, no, this is how you do winning. Yeah, he won and he handled it. You, yes, you understand that notoriety ain't all it's cracked up to be. Mm -mm. And money can be a great way to have security, but it can also be a demotivating factor for people who just want to live off your damn money. That's true. I mean, I, I love this. This he took it far. I mean, those are the two people that you could argue should be the only people that knew. He took it even further and said, you know what? I'm not even going to tell my wife and kid because now mm -mm. we're going to find out what they're really made of. And... They don't know they have their safety net, um, but they got one. They got a huge safety net. I'm with him. I could be sleeping right next to your ass. <laughs> yeah. You ain't going to know nothing. <laughs> I'm not telling you nothing. The only thing you're going to know is the rent gets paid yeah, every got month. Paid in. <laughs> we might go on another vacation. Might go on another year. Year. <laughs> Where you get this money from? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I don't know where I got it from. Uh, and you don't need to know either. <laughs> you happy? <laughs> You'll know when I die. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and that's crazy. He could set up his kids' yeah, future. Yeah, you'll know, you know when I die. I'll leave, it, I'll leave it to you, the grandkids, and all that. But I listen. You, you can know, change your whole family's lineage. You know, you know we had that billion-dollar lottery? Yeah. that's. I played it because I saw oh, how big it was. Oh, you played it. I had to. I oh. bought 10 tickets. Wow. I had to. You were ready. I was ready. <laughs> Boy, ready. Now, let me ask you, if you had won, would you, you know, 
I wouldn't tell most people. No, I don't care about telling. Hmm. I'm not asking about telling. What are you asking? If you have one, would I have broken you off a little yeah. bit? Yeah. You got to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, from what you just said, you wouldn't tell me. No. I, 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 I would give you money. You sure? Because it sounds like you wouldn't even tell your family you had the money. So I don't know if you would give it to me or not. You might. Don't turn this I'm just around. using what you said. That's that, that you are equivocating. <laughs> that's, that's, that's equivocation. You and can't use words that I don't know in your defense because that's only going to confuse me. So you have to think about whether that you would give me money. <laughs> it's not that I have to think about it. I'm thinking about how much. Now who believes that? Not me. <laughs> but but if I won, I would um yeah. I I would I'm, I might tell my you know closest closest, closest friends. People. I would say my closest friends and um, family. No, I'm not, not telling, even friends. I'm not probably telling. Just, I'm not telling no friends. Yeah, probably just family. <laughs> no, friends, no, but if there are people I wanted to give money to, then that'd be different. Then that would be different. But, just, but I like. But getting back to the story, I like the fact that he gave five million dollars to, to charity. charity instantly too. Man, that's beautiful, this, right? This guy is this guy is on it. Yeah. And he didn't wait, you know. That wasn't a decision that he had to think about. It seems like it was like, all right. I would much rather have wealth and anonymity than to be rich and famous. Yeah, I'm starting to feel that way. Now too, the problem is, I'm on TV. Exactly. You don't <laughs> so, have a choice. So Come that, with the job. So that dream is gone. <laughs> <laughs> but there's ways that you can live your life that don't revolve around the fame and notoriety. Oh yeah, no. So, I, I would never be that person. Exactly. You know, who, you know, leads with the fame. Mm -hmm. 15 people walking through the airport with you, yeah. taking photos you while you walk. You have to let people know who you are without yeah, them knowing no. who you are. Yeah. yeah. No. I, as a matter of fact, I was on the plane recently mm -hmm. with this social media guy. You know, the guy that, I forget his name, and we might have to cut this part off, but they will. Yeah. Um, the guy that dresses up like a, a, a woman, he's real dark skinned. Oh, I know him. Don't say his name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, he was on the flight with me. He's a good guy, too. He is a good guy. Really good guy. He's a really good guy. So he was standing behind me uh -huh. on, on the plane. Yeah. And I ignored his ass. Like, I didn't know who yeah. he was. Yeah. First, because I'm from New York. Yeah. And that's kind of how we do. Exactly. But secondly, I don't care. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't like, matter. None for like, you. Are you going <laughs> to... Donate to my car. Look, are you going to give me $5 million? Because <laughs> I'm not really... I don't... Yeah, I'm exactly. not into fame. And what does it do anyway? It's a yeah. person. It's a person. The only person... I'm almost done. The only person that you feel that way about that I had to stop hmm. and pawn over was Tony Morris. Really? I met her in a toy store. Wow. Oh. In a toy store? I was, I was wasting time for a meeting. She yeah. was in the toy store buying something for her grandchildren. And I turned and Tony Morris was standing right there. You're like, and I almost fainted you like didn't a know little what to girl. Do. <laughs> I felt like a. It was like Michael Jackson was in there for most I felt like a little white girl meeting the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> meeting the Beatles. I was like, Tony Morris. She yeah. was so kind to me. That's the one for you. I, I, love said, that. To her, I said to her, I love, I, you, I love your books. Yeah. She said, that's good. I wrote them for you. Wow. I know that was all you needed. That's a great note to end on right there. <laughs>
You heard me say I'm surprised nobody in Baltimore has killed it. You're right. Because there's a lot of killing going on in Baltimore. Uh, for, okay. For a lot dumber so, reasons. This is another neighborhood one that <clears throat> I'm curious to know your thoughts on this one, actually, because I don't know how you're going to feel. Um, this is in Australia. According to the Lad Bible, a woman calls for a child-free suburb because she doesn't want to live near screaming kids. She's gone viral and wants, you know, this adults only <laughs> suburb so that grown ups, grown up, grown ups can finally enjoy their peace and quiet time. So this is a woman who has nothing to do yeah. and is clearly not having sex. <laughs> this is a woman who has who needs to have a 22 second orgasm. <laughs> this is yeah, you have too, you have you have way too much time. Said she went to her local pool to do some laps and ran into a bunch of noisy kids. And she said, I just feel like for the people like me that are evil and hate kids, we should have our own suburb. She called we, herself evil? I, she literally quoted herself saying, yes, they should have their own suburb where they can just be quiet and undisturbed. How do you hate kids? I, don't, I, know. I, don't, I don't understand. You can't like trust that. her no way. No. She got to go. No, I, I mean... <laughs> I don't understand how you legitimately hate children for being children yeah. when, when, after all, you were one. You were one, too, you, you know? know? And imagine if that law was in effect when you were running around making noise and spitting all over And it side. doesn't help that she's got, you know, all these supporters. The video got over 246,000 views. But she's got people Another commenting. example of how stupid people are. Man. Keep going. There's people commenting things like, after getting my three boys ready for school this morning, I totally feel this. Child-free pools, restaurants, movies, and planes would be amazing from another mom. Another one added, I love kids, and I still love this idea and would love to move there. <laughs> and then, of course, Are we she got the back children now? Yeah, but she got the backlash from other people that were saying, you used to be a kid. Thank you. It's good to know that this And is that there are already places like that, and they're called retirement villages. Wow, that was good. It's a real good comeback. Yeah, that's good. And I was thinking it initially, like, this sounds like she just wants to live in a retirement community. Why don't you just go somewhere where yeah. the age is 60 and up and then you ain't got to worry about no kids there. Is she older or younger? Do you know? Um, it doesn't tell her age, but if I had to guess, she's probably, she sounds like 60s. Yeah. Yeah. She's younger. Really? See, that's even. Like 30 something? So she just sounds evil. She's crotchety. Yeah. She ain't got no kids probably. Mm -hmm. You think? Yeah. She's not even using them nothing. <laughs> nothing. She's the real life Corella Deville, it sounds like. She's um Woo. I I, I I would hate to be that kind of person in the Me world. too. Just miserable. Yeah, she just wants to put that venom out on people who don't deserve it. What was it you told me? Um the god of opportunity being a baby. Yeah, Greek god. So it's like if you can't even see joy in a baby and appreciate a baby's just yeah. presence and being, and what happened in your and, life? And kids go to sleep eventually. You know, they're yeah. not screaming 24-7 uh, yeah, all day. They're not all and honestly, day. she act like she's going to be outside surrounded by babies all day. It's like you're probably in the house. You, do, you, do you hear babies screaming across the street? Yeah. <laughs> like, Turn your music up. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I think people live lives of quiet desperation. Yeah. And instead of confronting the truth of that. She's just miserable. They turn that misery on people who don't deserve it. Yeah, misery loves company. Well, yeah. But more than loving company, it likes to recreate itself. Yeah, more misery. And it likes to turn its venom and its vitriol yeah. into a reason for being. It's like a spreading disease. And if you're not careful, we will all, we, we're all capable of it. Oh, for sure. That's like why so, depression so, so and you, things exist. You're, you're, you're miserable in one area of your life, right? And instead of confronting that area and that feeling, those feelings are buried and they fester and manifest in another area. Yeah. So you'll be mad at your mom, but you're taking it out on your girlfriend. Or mad at your girlfriend, but you're taking it out on your friends. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. People do that all the time at Collateral work. Collateral damage. Mad at work, come home, and the family yeah. suffers, or vice versa. True. And that's why it's so important to confront the living of your days as they are. And to make sure that you protect people from the worst of who you, of who you are. 
right? So what is that? Let's 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 make this yeah. let's make this part of the conversation more important than okay. the story. Okay. Because the question now becomes, how is it that I make sure that my problems, my issues, all of my vitriol, how can I protect you from that? That's very considerate too. It's a it's real a, act of love, honestly. Thank you. I was just about to say mm -hmm. that is what love is. Yeah. It's the very definition of love. Yeah. Is that I do not want to harm you with the things that are hurting me. Mm. So let's go, let's go further. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm on a roll. You are. It's the water. Go ahead. Come on. Let's do a lot of women don't understand oh, why men, and I'm look, I'm no expert on women, but mm. a lot of women don't understand why men go into their caves. Mm. So a woman will say to a man, I've had women come to me um, for counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't reach him. He won't let me in. He won't let me in. And she'll do everything in her power to get in. I want to get in. I want to mm -hmm. get in. And she'll come to me for strategies to get him in, to get, to get, to get in. My sister came to me once. She was dating someone. Mm -hmm. He won't let me in. I said to her, my sister's name is Iris. <clears throat> I said, Iris, have you ever considered the possibility that he doesn't want to let you into something he's trying to get out of? Have you ever considered the possibility that he won't let you in because he's protecting you from something that's already hurting him? Mm. I said, Iris, maybe you should consider the possibility of not trying to get in, but convincing him to come out. To come out. And the way you convince him to come out is you live. Mm. You make living look so good. That they want to do it too. <laughs> now we're done. Hey, that's a My that's work a here is word, done, people. <laughs> My work here is done. I'm trying to mm -hmm. tell you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Are we really done? Yeah, that was the last story. Okay. And I think that was a great note to end on. It um, was. I it think was. everybody's going to be able to take that with them. I think yeah. they're going to be able to take that with them. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try to get in. Anyway, yeah. thank you for watching. It's been amazing. We're going to do this again. So when we come back, make sure you come back so we can have more times like this. This was good. It was. It was a good one. It was. It was enjoyable. It must have been the water. Anyway. <laughs> See y'all next time. <laughs> <laughs>